Well, everybody, I'm coming from, from a tree stand we're gonna move. This is kind of like a quick thing we were trying to adjust, but I kind of want to share a few things, um, different thoughts, removing this tree stand, different location. But you might think, man, this is a good food plot. Well, this food plot is conceded down to a CP25 short, which is pretty much uh, federal terms for a short and a prairie mix. And this will be part of a fire regime. We did a lot of cut stump we showed in a previous video. And down here was a very failed attempt at running a fecon mulcher. So you can see all this chunky wood here that didn't get ground up properly. When uh, my contractor comes, I'm going to have him fix this with his fecon. We may have put a tube in. See some of that water puddling up. We had a good inch of rain last night. Thank God. And uh, But that's something to think about in the future for us to put a tube in so we can uh, be able to drive over the tractor. Because the goal is... Um, we want to be able to seed this down after the fecon's done to a really simple annual perennial um, food plot, not food plot, fire break mix. We're looking at wheat, um, crimson clover, bristine white clover, and essentially the, the goal is uh, mow it after the nesting season, after all that stuff, seed out, and ideally not mow it during the stressful times in the summer so you don't stress out the white clover. Because we are going to have some shade right now, it's really open, but it's March, and we did do some crops releasing here, but there's quite a few trees we left behind. We got some walnuts grown, we got some swampies in here, and so we're going to try to, um, well, we did drop down quite a bit of these other trees in here, but still, it's going to get shaded out and will be fantastic. But the whole farm where we have Timber fire breaks will have that mix on. I don't think it's even an acre after I think I'll buy all of it. But anyway, I, I want people to think about this because some people might be like, I don't want to see it in my fire break. What's the point? I think it's a waste of time. But it, I want you to think about this. Like, if you can have every edge of your farm that has timber, that you can bring in fire units and you have mow trails and green trails that adds value to your farm, but also it's going to make burn units a lot more easier to manage. But also it's going to give you another whole another bird's eye view because how many times you go into certain parts of your farm and you may be with a consultant or a contractor, your buddies, and you go to a corner of your farm you haven't been to in five, eight years and you have an infestation of honeysuckle or black locusts or just, you know, it's overgrown. You're like, oh my God, I didn't know about this. That's why these fire breaks come so in handy because you can keep them mowed that once or twice a year or hell might be good to go for a foliar ride every now and then even through the tall stuff that tall wheat and clover just to make sure you can stay on top of your invasives but also it's a good hunting strategy like i'm moving this stand and primarily it's not a great wind and also i'm really open in here like even the summertime we've dropped a lot of trees and it's just gonna be way more open so we'll probably move this but we do have this i don't know if you can see it from here right there there's our old blind. That's the blind I shot my first deer out of, man. That might be a really good, we could revitalize that spot, make that more, um, a more attractive hunting location down the road. But let's say this stand was ideal. Let's say, you know, you had, let's say we were able to keep this food plot and you have this really great zone and you have thick edge feathering over here that's discouraging you're coming out and you're having them come down at a certain point. They're coming down this fire break. They're coming out of that bedding, that early successional habitat. You have these beautiful swamp white oaks around you especially that guy right there, they're dropping acorns, you're slowing deer down. You're giving the chance to browse their way to the food plot and it gives you way more time. Now, you know, I, I might change my mind. I might just learn to brush in this, this stand, this lone wolf stand here with some uh, leafy twigs and stuff and try for the best. A lot of guys do that. Uh, might use some burlap camo, something that's not gonna blow in the wind too much. There's options to make this more attractive, but by see all these functions for stacking top of each other, there's a lot of functions here. We're able to create, use this bedding and browse early successional habitat. We're using as a natural funnel. We have the fire break that we're going to seed down to keep that green. It's all these functionality of managing your property better. It's a ready to go um, fire line down the road, except just running a rake through or blowing leaves out of that stuff um, in the spring to get the leaves out and make that less um, flammable. And it might be a really great hunting strategy location. So all these this this all these functionalities in the fire break you can use for your benefit, become a better white tail hunter, turkey hunter. Uh, let's be honest, if you have a nice strip of wheat and clover and open timber, man, I'm sure a turkey would not mind strutting that stuff, that's for sure. So but um anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.